but mainly Peter Moore. And uh, his team, uh, the, the researchers here, are from uh, Graz University of Technology, uh, Graz Technische Universität. Uh, and their presentation will be on um, retargeting technical documentation to augmented reality. So this is the fourth and last presentation in this session. So welcome. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, retargeting of technical documentation to augmented reality. So this is what I imagine would be a really great instruction manual. I want to be that in augmented reality, I want to see all the information in place on my object, maybe with a tablet or a HMD, whatever you prefer. And I think that augmented reality is the perfect medium for conveying instruction manuals, because uh, be it the coffee machine or your car's engine, uh, it's always easier if you can see what's going on directly on the object. Uh, augmented reality is really nice in that case, but uh, the problem here is that you need content for that. For every instruction manual, you need someone to create an augmented reality tutorial. Um, well, you need the 3D geometry in any case, and for the, for the rendering process, but you need also an author to generate the instructions and to create animations and place labels, and this usually requires a graphics professional, which I show here in an <laughs> exaggerated way in Blender, how slow it is to create a simple animation. But what if we could get free content somewhere? So that would be really nice. So free content is always nice uh, <laughs> uh, for researchers especially. Um, where can we find that? Um, well, 3D models um, used in production processes, so maybe for manufacturers will have a CAD model which they use in production, so that's not that of a problem. You can also scan it with a 3D scanner. But what about the, the content itself, the sequence of actions? the things you need to do to show an instruction manual. Where can we get that from? So what we found out that you get instructions with everything you buy, for example, for your coffee machine, for your do-it-yourself furniture, for Lego, and for your copy machine, you always get a, a handbook, or be it on a printed format or a PDF on a CD. So there are instructions in there, but they are two-dimensional. We cannot really use that in AR. So what we would want is something to generate 3D information out of the 2D printed media. Uh, this would be really good. So we have the CAD model, and now uh, we can somehow condense these two things into an augmented reality manual. So the ingredients for that are the 3D model, which we maybe get for free. And the other thing is the printed manual, which is co also comes along with the process. So how can we do that? The key to that is we need to align the 3D data, which we have, to our input data, which is in this case, as you can see on the left, uh, a scan of the coffee machine's manual. Here you can see the coffee machine of our institute, the former coffee machine, now I have it, uh, with labels attached and everything. And we want to align the 3D object to this input image. Um, we use that, we, we use point correspondences to do that. These are user-defined point correspondences, and our system then matches the orientation, position, and scale of the 3D model so that it resembles the one in the image. Uh, um, this way, we get a registration and alignment of the 3D data to our 2D input image. Um, as you can see on this image, uh, the, overlay, the, the, the 3D data is now overlaid on the 2D image. Uh, now, once this is aligned, uh, we can correlate uh, the leader lines, for example, to the 3D object. And the alignment process is essential to all the steps I'm going to talk about now. Um, first of all, we, in, we, we took a look at several handbooks we could find. So these are from, from different books and also IKEA and Lego. 
and we identified that there are some reoccurring elements which uh, designers and authors of manuals use, like um, you can see annotations to identify parts, uh, arrows which uh, show the motion of a part, as you can see in this cart example. There are explosion diagrams. They're usually found in technical manuals. Uh, and uh, you, can, you, you can show the internal structure of an object with that. It's more a technical side, usually in combination with annotations. And also very popular is uh, image sequences. As you know, maybe from a Lego manual, that there are different points in time where there's a photo of an object and you can see that maybe Lego blocks have been added to the object and this is an image sequence. And of course, uh, combinations of all of these elements exist and are used. I'm going to talk about the different elements and how we can lift these elements from 2D into 3D or even 4D with animations. Annotations are commonly used to identify different parts of an object. And here's the scan from our coffee machines manual. You can see the quite a lot of labels, 20 labels, I think, and different parts of the machine. And it would be really annoying to do that by hand. So what our system can do is automatically trace all these leader lines and scan the label text. And since we have the alignment of the 3D object to this 2D image, we can now project the anchor points of the labels to the 3D object. And this, again, enables us to do something like this. We have now 3D anchor points and the labels on our 3D object in our 3D scene. We can use it in augmented reality or in virtual reality. And this was done automatically in mere seconds. Another thing are arrows. They sh show the motion of an object. So pull out this handle or pull up this handle or fold this thing together. And there, for us humans, it's easy to interpret arrows, but uh, for a computer it's not because an arrow in a drawing is just a 2D element. It does not know the correspondence to a part. Um, we thought about that and our system can detect arrows in an image and it can also uh, take a look at the object, the 3D object, the aligned 3D object and determine its parts and the motions the parts can perform. As you can see on the far right image, uh, these are the movable parts at that moment. And now the system can compare the movement directions, the possible movement directions of the parts with the 2D arrow it detected before. And then it can give us a list of candidates or choose one of the most, uh, the one, uh, one part which is most probably the one which is meant by the arrow. And the result of this process looks somewhat like this. We have now AR application generated from that image with the arrow, we can put that in AR and generate this animation from an arrow. What we also explored was explosion diagrams. Uh, as I said before, they show the spatial relationships and they also showed to, uh, used to show the internal parts of an object and then usually in combination with uh, annotations. Uh, this is a bit more complex. Um, here, for every movable part, we check the best fit in the input image. So, as you can see here, we have this lid of this uh, mixer highlighted in red. Um, we try to find the best matching position of this object, and we do that for every movable part of the object. And as you can see on the right, um, all the parts now are automatically placed in the position where they would be in the image. And this enables us to reproject, for example, annotations on the explosion diagram, which in turn looks something like this. We have a valve as an input here, and we can create an augmented reality application like this with including the annotations and also some in-place instructions. So image sequences, everybody knows Lego? Who knows Lego? Yes? Yeah? OK. OK. Hmm? <laughs> Um, these are image sequences. So you start with one block and you add another blocks, a lot of blocks, and in the end you get the Star Wars land speeder. Uh, we actually have that model for testing purposes only, of course. And how can we find out what happens here? So this also works on 
image sequences like this coffee machine again. Uh, there are maybe different photos of this coffee machine and they show the machine in a different state and we want to check the transition between these states. Uh, therefore, we detect a region of change where the system detects that something has happened. We don't know yet what happened, but there is a change, as you can see in the image on the right. Uh, we again then move all the parts, all the movable parts, in that region of interest to find the best matching fit of these parts, which give us the new state of the machine. And we could then, out of two images, generate an animation, which looks, for example, like this. So this was generated out of two input images where one, in one image the door is closed and the other one it's open. And of course, uh, most instructions uh, use combination of all of these elements. And a good example, again, is uh, Lego, now for real. Uh, here you can see this is a photo of the manual. You can see that there are, there's a sequence of two instructions, number 11 and number 12. And as you can see that there are also arrows indicating that you should put that block on, on this piece here. Uh, this is a classical mixed tutorial, a uh, mixed element style. And we tried to convert the whole Lego manual, which consists of 14 steps, into an animation. And as you can see, this is what the system made out of this manual. So there were 14 input images. and these are all the animations that were generated automatically, uh, sorted in steps, and now all the steps are played at once to save time. But as you can see, it assembles the object uh, like it would be in the manual. So what can we do with all this? We have now a lot of information extracted from 2D and lifted that one or two dimensions higher into 3D. And here we have an example what you could, uh, how you could combine this uh, information. So here you have the explosion diagram of a valve on the left with annotations. And further in the instruction manual, there's a disassembly sequence where you should remove certain parts of this valve to get to the internal parts. And if you use just these uh, 2D input images shown here, we can generate uh, animations or even interactive tutorials like shown on the right, these are keyframes of a, of a video and they show you which parts to remove in which order in place so that you can get to the interior of the valve. So we of course tried everything out and created a mobile augmented reality setup. This uh, uses a tablet as a display device and we use a Kinect for tracking. So there's inside out tracking here. Uh, works really well. And we can walk around the coffee machine, and it's a live demo. Um, as you can see here, we recorded something. Here we are on the wrong side of the coffee machine, obviously. The, the brewing group is on the wrong side. But from the manual, we also extracted the correct viewing position, and we placed an avatar there. And to guide the user to this uh, spotting location, and from here, the instruction is best viewed because that's what the author of the manual said. Uh, the, the, he took the photo from this perspective. And here we can play animations, which we extracted from the manual, and then also explore the insides of the machine. OK, so what did we do? What, what did we achieve? Uh, we investigated methods to retarget printed 2D manuals to VR and AR, so actually we put the information into the 3D domain and which can be used in any other way. So it's not exclusive to VA, VR or AR. We also have this whole prototype system where you really put in 2D input images, a 3D model, and then you really get animations out of that script in a, in a, in a XML file, so you can use that anywhere. We applied our methods to various manuals uh, which were common and available, like we used IKEA manuals and Lego and the other manuals you have seen, like the coffee machine. And we also applied these results in an AR setup. And the animations and everything worked out pretty well and it looked quite good. So what is there to do? Um, 
of course, there are, these are not all elements which occur in instruction manuals. Uh, it's probably more, and the, would, we would need to investigate further elements. And I want to say that the alignment process is the only thing where a user actually is involved, but we are trying hard to remove that step as well, so the entire process is automatic. Uh, and we also want to make this, give the system some kind of common sense so it can infer implicit instructions. Like if you remove, I don't know, the upper piece of a, 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 an object and you need to remove some screws out of the way, the system should infer that instruction. That could be possible. And we also want to think about really old manuals, like uh, maybe old car engines, where the documentation material is really bad, maybe it's just photocopies, and that would need special treatment in, in the vision, on the vision side. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Thank you. Steve Feiner, Columbia. Really nice work. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you've been thinking about some of those cases in which if you're opening something or turning something or doing other things, it doesn't just happen in a straightforward way. It needs to be done slowly or quickly or following a particular trajectory, which might be explained uh, in uh, language in the manual as opposed to in the graphics. Yeah. Um, we thought about... Uh, scanning the text information mm -hmm. too, but um, we did not explore that at the moment. So that would be um, some data mining process and scan the text for maybe word blocks and phrases which say um, open slowly and so on. That mm -hmm. would be really good to have that so we can include that information into our animations. It's a very good idea, yes, mm -hmm. but we did not explore mm -hmm. that. And what about situations in which the material in the manual doesn't really correspond to the model because it's an older version or it was drawn incorrectly? So if, if, there no, happens. if there are no images or... No, if, if, the, if the images are wrong, if which is sadly very common in manuals, the images are okay. an older <laughs> version of something. Um, well, uh, in this... Uh, special setup what we have here. We have a 3D sensor and we could check the current scene if what, uh, what the manual says mm -hmm. is true. So is this the, the correct coffee machine? Does it look like this? Does it have this shape? And with the 3D information of the, of the CAD model maybe and the point clouds, we could check if all the components are there or if it's a different version of the machine. Uh, this is ongoing work, yes. But it's not in this system. Thank you. Hi, Alex Owa from Google. Um, so I was wondering a little bit about, I mean, first of all, really interesting work, really appreciate it. Um, I was wondering a little bit about uh, the constraints or some assumption about like the axis of rotation and, you know, you have a lot of manuals where you're twisting things into, mm -hmm. snapping into place and I can see that this works really, really well for like Lego, but, you know, more advanced stuff like, uh, like that hinge and that, you know, yeah. how, how do we know what the axis of rotation is, for example? Okay. Um, it's correct. Uh, for example, if you have a, a, a bolt and a nut uh, with a screwing, uh, a screw, uh, so, so to remove it in a circular way, um, we don't, we cannot know that from the images. Um, if you have a CAD model, a good one, you may know that it's uh, a bolt which you need to remove in a certain way. So if there's some, some threads on it, you could infer that motion from, from the CAD model. But if you don't have good 3D data, then you cannot know that. And um, the hinge, for example, we have some kind of a... In one way, if it's a good CAD model, uh, there may be the pivot point already set at the correct position. And we also know... Uh, that if the hinge is really good modeled, you can make a collision detection. You can try to move it in certain directions and you maybe find one axis there. But in, in this example with the hinge, we had the, the correct uh, pivot point set for the, uh, for the door. But you're right, this is a, it would be very complex if you would not know the rotational axis. Okay. Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, Tim Dwyer, Monash University. So if I understood correctly, a key part of your system is the CAD model. Uh, yes. So where do you get the CAD model? Um, we think that most production processes already use a CAD in some, uh, some way. So as a producer of manuals, you might already have the 3D model from your own production process. We all are also thought about how, get, how do we get it for maybe pre-CAD area models. You could apply certain stages of this uh, manual uh, retargeting to a 3D scan, for example, so you can still place labels and show, the certain part, uh, show parts of the machine. But for animations of parts, you would need an object which has different movable parts. Uh, in our cases, we, for the coffee machine, we did not have a real CAD data. We just took a Kinect scan of it and made a crude model. It's really crude, it's just for the proportions, but for an AR display, this still works. So this can be done really fast, and well, if you have a production process, then you get a CAD for free, so yeah. <laughs> I see, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.